bombs have been used in the world's most terrible attacks. Since Alfred Nobel created dynamite to detonate a tunnel, his invention was then used as a weapon by terrorists, and thousands have been victims as a result of this threat. So we can, we can see in the data that Iraq is on the top of list of terrorist attacks. So wondering why? However, one day we found out that a British former policeman was sentenced to 10 years in jail for selling bogus detectors to Iraqi government and Kurdish interior ministry for $85 million. And possibly thousands have died as a result of these bogus detectors, which are probably still at many checkpoints. Besides causing death directly on humans, explosives may also pollute the environment and hurt humans indirectly and over a longer time span. My mom, for example, has been suffering with lung cancer for over two years now and living in an environment polluted with hazardous chemical wastes is dangerous for a healthy person. So imagine, so imagine how it's for a sick person, especially one with lung cancer. I can't forgive Noble for probably having an effect on death of millions and my mom's cancer, but I can never forgive people of this generation for not having a response to these dangerous attacks. One of my life mottos is, you have never really lived until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. Just take a second and think about it. Did you question your existence in this world? Or do you feel like you have left a mark behind? Have you ever thought about leaving a mark upon the world? Have you ever took that thought and tried to make it happen, rather it just stay a thought? Did you give up after a slight push backward, or did you get back up on your feet and stand stronger than you have ever stood before? And lastly, the simplest but most meaningful question. Are you proud of who you are? Well, first of all, I believe there's no better exercise for the heart than reaching down and lifting people up. And if you're thinking how, well, everybody has something to offer. It's just a matter of, have you offered it? There might be something in you that the world really needs, and you'll be forever remembered for it. Ernest Hemingway once said, every man's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one from the other. And I choose to live and die in a way that will distinguish me from the non-responsive people. The world is a, cru is a dangerous place to live, not because of the cruel and dictating people, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. We may think about creating, but we ne tend not to think about the lifespan of our creation or if our product helps the world as well. Technology is at the peak of creating things that the human brain could not even imagine of processing. While in today's world, it's available and no one has given the effort to open their blinded eyes and see the blood of many innocent lives and are deaf towards the shouts of people. Is this what we've become? Is this humanity? You raise your kids in a warm and loving home, motivate them to study to become doctors and engineers. And then they start a family of their own and raise their kids in the same manner and lifestyle. And this continues for many generations. But what has been created? What changes have been made? What impacts have they had? What have they offered to the world? Whose life have they changed along the way? Well, most likely very few, because you're the role model for them. And children follow your example, not your advice. Besides the physical impact. <laughs> besides the physical impacts explosives and bombs have on our atmosphere, it also has an internal and emotional effect on our atmosphere. So imagine, imagine how our people feel walking or driving in a crowded area. Do they feel safe or do you feel safe? Secure or protected? Well, obviously not. With all the attacks that have taken place, besides it being the top in the most of tourist attacks. 
So our fear heightened in the bomb attack that took place seven years ago in front of interior of ministry while we were taking our final exams. But the attack that made us take our fear into action was the bombing of last year in front of interior of ministry that took place two days before the deadline of registration of national science fair competition. So we decided to take a challenge to face one of the biggest problems our country has. But one problem we had was our ideas were bigger than our strength. So after our research on why we still face these attacks, we found out that most of the detectors used and located in our checkpoints are either bogus or not effective enough to detect bombs like C4, because C4 is a plastic bomb that can be hidden inside concrete and metal and avoids getting recognized by normal detectors. So besides that, this type of explos explosive can hardly be detected. Terrorists even make it harder by using ambulances as their vehicle. Knowing that Kurdish security forces do not check thoroughly and knowing it's an ambulance, they let them enter more easily than others. So we decided to take a challenge to face this biggest this big problem. So we collected our ideas and set our goals and aims. And we told our supervisor about what we had in mind. Actually, he didn't want to disappoint us, but because of few facilities and not having equipped labs to develop such a sophisticated system, he said this might be impossible. After being told this thing, you would think we would give up, but no, we didn't. Just like Maya Angelou once said, you may encounter many defeats, but you mustn't be defeated. So we insisted staying on our idea, even though our education was bare minimum for what we had in mind. But that didn't stop us from anything. Us being girls made it a bit more difficult and faced even more obstacles that we have already faced because of these issues and our minimum education and minimum access to equipment. So we decided to use an existing detector in a newly developed system. Our system is to automatically scan all the vehicles passing by on the road in a short period of time. Normally, bomb detectors take several minutes to check each car individually. So we thought of a system capable of examining multiple vehicles at once without stopping each car like at a checkpoint. And it has another ad uh, advantage is that it reduces traffic jam and no one even feels anything or being detected. Each system is composed of three detectors. Two are hidden inside trash cans and the other is movable behind highway signs so that they check the cars in all directions by sending triangular shaped ultraviolet beam of lasers. Uh, and when, they, uh, when the cars slow down while approaching the speed bumps, it gives us even more time for a more accurate detection. And the received signals alerts the detector that the car is carrying a bomb. So the CCTV cameras capture the image of the vehicle and warn the security center of the city. We make many precautions to ensure that our mission is taken out successfully. One question that we get a lot is how did we come up with this idea? Well, necessity is the mother of creativity. So I guess the problems around us prompted us to do something that will make a change which will benefit the people of my country. So many months passed and we created our system. We attend a national competition and we were successful. And I attended an international competition in Netherlands which led me to achieve so much. The judges were so interested in our system and already wanted to adopt it. But we refused them and promised each other to bring it back to our own country first. Unfortunately, after winning two awards, our system being all over the media and achieving all of this success, but our dream of saving lives is yet to come true. Besides that physical after our article was published and was spread worldwide, most of the reactions were extremely positive, but some were saying negative comments. So uh, uh, out of all our achievements, some still managed to see it in a bad way. And during this time of taking in all these different reactions, I accidentally came up upon a page of John Green's book, The Fault in Our Stars. 
the main character in the book gets cancer and is not upset about dying, but dying without leaving a mark upon the world. The character said, the real heroes anyway aren't the people doing things. The real heroes are the people noticing things and paying attention. The guy who invented smallpox vaccine did not really invent anything. He just noticed that people with smallpox didn't get smallpox. Well, I don't want to interfere and downgrade someone's creativity, but my message here is that even if people downgrade our creativity, it will still benefit my society if it's put in use. <laughs> Every human's life is worthless, worthy. Every human's breath is worth more than the treasures and wealth in this world. A life is not something man-made. It is not something technology and money can make. A human is something priceless. Hopefully, you have never experienced the pain and loss of a loved one. But probably most of you have. Has anything in this vast and wide world brought that loved one back to you? Has technology given their souls a new life? Has money? No, it hasn't. And it won't. Since a human life is so precious, why do we not make the effort to protect it, to keep it safe? Take an innocent child who has lost a mother or father in a bombing. Do you not feel like you have taken a part in shattering a child's heart, hopes, and most importantly, dreams by not speaking up and just keeping a blinded eye and a definite ear? Do you not feel guilty? I hope and I hope that there comes a time when our system won't ever be needed. I pray that the universe will be safe enough for people to be fearless. We are starting from ourselves and taking baby steps right now. That hopefully will result in peace and prosperity for our country. Yes, we are young and therefore lack experiences, but we believe good ideas have no age, gender or religion. I'm asking each and all of you to start your mission to change this reality with us. Even if you can't take a, a, even if you can't take a big step, your little steps can make a change because every big achievement starts from little steps. Gandhi once said, be the change you wish to see in the world. Hopefully the change you are aiming for is to save humanity. Even if our system isn't put in use now, we will do our best to put it in use in the future. And, and may, may the breeze we burn light the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.